This is the Warrior from Nixie, and it is their very first time doing a single unit controller. I'd argue it's probably the most important product that this company has ever produced, but regardless of if it puts them on the map more or less, one thing for sure is they managed to make a better version than one of the most loved controller and gaming history. Let's get it. I am Clef and you're watching Game Tech Talk, a channel that specializes in everything gaming that is tech related. So the unit you see here I will give and give away. I should explain, I am expecting a unit for review but it hasn't reached me in time so I did purchase one and because I don't need to have two of them, I will be giving away the one that I purchased. All the details by the end of the video. All opinions you'll hear on this review are my own, they technically did provide a review unit but that has no impact on my opinions nor do they get to see what this video is all about before you guys see it. Alright, so first let's go with the unboxing experience. There's a few things that surprised me that I did not expect. You have a very nice braided cable in there. You also have a dongle, which is awesome, and that dongle can either be used by USB-C or by the GameCube adapter. So technically that controller would work on an original GameCube. Unfortunately, I didn't have one to test, but they do claim that it works. Other than that, you have different accessories to customize, for example, your C-Stick if you want something smaller or bigger. And you have also those rings that go around the stick so you can change for something that has the eight axis, much like the GameCube one did, or if you want something that is a perfect circle. In terms of colors, you have three options, purple, which is the one I have here, black and orange, which is the one that I'm expecting for review. Unfortunately, they do not have silver. I think I understand why, being as the Wavebird was silver, I assume Nixie probably thought it best to not attract any of that kind of attention, which I'm sure they wouldn't want. So when talking about the buttons, the face buttons, you have micro switches, same goes for the D-pad and also the shoulders. Now, when looking at the triggers and analog sticks, they both use Hall of Effect technology so magnets rather than having potentiometers and so you have less risks of dead zones better reliability and just offering a longer lifespan in general when talking about the back paddles we actually so that's one of the ways that this controller improves versus the original one we do have back paddles so one on each side so that's two extra buttons which you can remap different options on the controller i'll put the list of what keys that you can input and also something that we've never ever seen in that format the gamecube style controller we have hair triggers in the back and we'll talk a little more about them later but they're there when looking at the internals in terms of antenna you have bluetooth you have of course the dongle and you can also play wired i have benchmarked all different connections and we'll talk more about that a little later on but yes you have all these options they're saying approximately 10 hours of playtime, two hours of charge with a 900 milliamp hour battery so decent not the best not the worst by any means i would assume for most people that it's going to be more than enough to at least have one seating as long as you don't forget to plug it in you'll always be good now let's talk compatibility and that's also another new thing for nixie this one being a single unit is compatible of course with the nintendo switch with the gamecube we mentioned it earlier it's also compatible with android and ios but it's also fully compatible with pc so really there's no devices that you wouldn't be able to use that on be it mac os be on a steam deck on a pc on the ipad i've used it it just works everywhere whenever you want to use a dongle you want to go GameCube mode. Now one thing that I find is nice, around the logo of Nixie on the controller, you will have a matching LED base off of the mode that you're going for. Another thing that we have with this controller is an HD rumble motor. So much like what you have on the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons on the Switch Pro controller, we have an HD rumble and it is the case here. Now there's a very popular test that exists to showcase the quality of the motor. When playing Super Mario Wonders and when you step on those notes uh, cubes it makes a vibration based off of the note that it plays so let's hear a few different controllers so that you can distinguish what the difference in quality is The way the 
this technology works basically is a low frequency speaker, much like a subwoofer would create vibrations if you're close to one. Think of having a mini subwoofer and the controller. And much like speakers, you can have different qualities. But for the purpose that we're making of it, it doesn't really matter all that much. Yes, there is a slight difference when you hear it, However, that difference, you won't really feel it. And that's the point. You still have layering. Now, there's something very interesting that they did with the controller and the accessories. They include this little piece that you can change for your back paddles. But you'll notice that this one doesn't have the middle button. That's where my logic is going, at least to allow this controller in competitive settings and to prevent people from being able to use the turbo button. You have a back paddle option that blocks this button because the turbo button is right beneath where the back paddle shield is. You know, much like other controllers that offers this option, you can operate the turbo. I'm not going to go through the process here. You have a manual, a very nice manual. Actually, it comes with the controller, but I will show you what buttons can be used with turbo. All right, so let's get into the games. Hey, Clef from the future here. First and foremost, if you appreciate this video, if you think it's quality in any kind of way, please consider hitting a like, subscribe and leaving a comment. But this video is not for that reason. I'm about to post the video on YouTube and I realize I may have been a little bit harsh on the D-pad. So I'll be talking about it throughout the uh, rest of this video. And yeah, as I'm filming, I'm testing, right? And as it turns out, maybe it was me. The D-pad actually is a lot better than I thought. And if I compare it to many Joy-Cons, it is very superior. I, I guess when making those comparisons, I'm also thinking about PC controllers. And in that sense, there is better, but it's actually a very decent D-pad. So just thought I would address it because it's a little bit unfair if I didn't. Thank you. When it comes to fighter, I will not be using the D-pad with this controller. I'm not really efficient with my Adukens. However, you do have a solution here that I think will for the most part take care of this issue, but that will depend on how flexible you are willing to be. Because you have the eight axis coves and one of those rings using the analog sticks on these controllers are better than pretty much any other controller because it's so easy to be precise because of those grooves. When talking about Smash, of course, this is the absolute best controller for which you want to use this, you know, if, especially if you've played Smash back in the GameCube era, which I did a whole lot of. So for me, it's my go to controller. It was the wizard. Now it will be the warrior for sure. It just feels great. Smash is one of those games that for so many people, we have so much association with a, con a GameCube controller. It's like hopping on a bicycle even if you haven't done any in 10 years it just comes naturally it's the controller that is so well designed for this game you can't really do better than that as far as i'm concerned as you'd expect it the experience is the absolute best but there's more to it which we'll get into performance but before we do that let's talk about every other game and this is where the warrior i don't want to say is not a good controller Rather, what I will say is it's a controller that should come with a certain level of expectation and a level of warning because it is different in terms of what you have on the market, the entire market that is, it is different than anything else we've seen for pretty much over 15 years. So it's been a long time since we didn't have a controller that goes against the norm. Nowadays, everything is similar to an Xbox type controller, DualSense, the Switch Pro. Sure, you have the symmetrical and asymmetrical, but other than that, they all follow pretty much the same pattern. You know, you have those same face buttons and those corners, those cardinals, whereas this one, is completely different. The idea behind that is your A button is much like what you have with Xbox and PlayStation, right? It is the center most at the bottom button, but usually your cancel button is to the right of it. It is B, whereas here the B is to the left and Y and X are kind of tilted to the other side as well. And they're backwards because it follows the Nintendo format. It is a different type of controller. It feels different. So much like what I said on my review with the wizard is if you want to buy this controller for every other game, you will have to some extent to rewire your brain. I do believe if you are able to do that, if you are willing to do that, you will be hard pressed for a long time to want to use anything else. Pretty much nothing that this controller is missing except like 
very specific features that I, I don't think are necessary for the controller to be great. I have decided that I want to make this my main controller, maybe not for every game, but at least for every casual game and Smash Bro because I really like the feel of this controller. I think the GameCube understood something when it comes to ergonomics that every other controller have done great, but in a completely different direction. The GameCube controller is so well thought out, so well designed, and to this day, I still believe it is the absolute best controller that Nintendo has ever produced. Now, the other aspect where I think this controller is just one that you want to use, if you are a retro gamer, you want to have this controller in your arsenal. For me, that's as simple as that. Right now, my main controller was DualSense Edge and the uh, Apex 4 from Fly Digi, two amazing products, but I have to enter a third position that will steadily be next to my computer and it's going to be the warrior because it is so well suited to retro gaming to a certain point a lot of retro games you're not going to have analogs in the way that they were designed so having those coves and those sticks makes it so easier to always rely on your inputs because the d-pad i find was it that it was me that wasn't pushing well enough, but I felt like even when using the diagonals, I was not getting a clear register every time. I still think they were on the right track to have something that felt similar to the GameCube controller, but you know, the fact that you don't have the, the analog triggers like the GameCube controller did, and the D-pad was, in my opinion, worse than the one on the Warrior. It was a good first attempt and it made the dream alive for a lot of us. So I'm still very happy that I have this one and I'm going to keep using it. But the Warrior is pretty much in absolutely every way a superior controller. I shouldn't forget the fact that it is designed to replace Joy-Cons. And in that sense, if you want Joy-Con style GameCube controllers, Yes, when it comes to playing every other games, you don't always want to have this. And so for me, the question sometimes is, okay, if I leave the house with my Switch and I don't want to pack too heavy, I'm not going to bring this. I will make sure that I have traditional style Joy-Cons. In fact, I'll be using the ones from uh, Koi Orvis, the Phantom ones. I love them. I use it really selectively and I use it way more as a standalone controller then I actually use them as Joy-Cons connected to the Switch. But when it comes down to the Warrior, that controller again beats it and pretty much everything. Like there's nothing that the Warrior has that is better on the Wizard. It is for every single thing a superior controller, minus the fact that you cannot attach them to the Switch. So when talking about the price, it is $68.99 US, whereas the Wizard is $69.99, so you have $1 less. I think the price is absolutely worth it. It's not overcharged. It's not overpriced. It may not meet as many objectives for the people who want to use as a Joy-Con, but again, it is absolutely a superior product. But one thing that we have talked very quickly about is the dongle and the dongle is such a great addition that I did not expect. Of course, for people that have the GameCube adapter for Switch, that's great to have and definitely you want to use that if you're playing on your Switch, like for sure. Or you plug it to the actual dock, which works as well, by the way, using the USB-C. So you really can use the dongle both ways. So here's what's interesting. When using this controller wired, you can hit up to 250 hertz pulling rate, which is more than the regular 125. You know, it's not on par with like the top tier controllers of the world, but it's still very, very good. Now, the thing that caught me off guard is when using the dongle, it's 125, so that's fine. I wouldn't be surprised by that just from a term of, just from a standpoint of, of compatibility with, you know, GameCube and the Switch. But the thing I did not expect, in all the 125 hertz controllers I've tested, and I've tested quite a lot, this one is clocked way higher than any other controller ever before it. It consistently hit way above 125 hertz. In fact, it would do anywhere between 145 to 150, and the latency is halved versus every other controller. The only controller that came close to having these kinds of performance, if you've seen my 20 controllers guide video, you'll know that I praised the Stadia controller because in terms of responsiveness, it was cutting above its weight class. 
And this is the exact same for the Warrior, but it actually beat the Stadia controller. So, and that is when using the dongle, by the way. So this is something that, in my opinion, is also one of the absolute most amazing features of this controller. It performs so damn well with the dongle. So the last question is, would I recommend? A hundred times, yes, a hundred percent. Totally. It is a great controller for the reasons that I've mentioned. If you are looking to be that single one controller that you use, just be ready. Just know what to expect. I do believe that this controller will do many things better than any other products I reviewed on the channel before it. And that is what makes me so appreciative of Nixie for creating that kind of product. For those who were around in the GameCube era, you know just what spending this much time with that controller did for you. The GameCube controller was so amazing. You know, back then I would have my PS2, I would have my Xbox and I would go between each consoles. And whenever I would grab that GameCube controller, it, you just felt it. It, it, was, it was built different, <laughs> like literally. I'm so happy that we have this controller now and it's not exactly the same. I'm not trying to imply that it is a one-to-one -to, -one to GameCube but I am definitely putting my vote of confidence that this is in every possible way a superior product. Quickly wanted to address the hair triggers so they do lock the mechanism so that it doesn't go as deep. I still find it goes a little deeper than I would have hoped, but still it's a great addition. I don't need to have NFC, which it doesn't have by the way. It does have a gyro, but it doesn't have NFC. So I don't need absolutely everything in this controller but if there's one thing I kind of wish it had, it would be a dock. So, you know, maybe a hit and a miss there. So for the giveaway, you have to be a resident of Canada or the United States. And all you have to do is comment on the video. And that's all there is to it. Once I pick up a winner, which should be approximately one month after the release of this video, I will announce it on the comment that you left and will ship you your winnings. Nixie, congratulations on a great product. Um, it is not the first time I review Nixie product. In fact, I have reviewed the Wizard and the Hyperion, which I'll put up there. I strongly suggest watching it if you're considering this one because you may want to compare and see what the differences are. Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.